What's up everybody? It's Mark with 09 Motorsports. Today I'm super excited because we're going to be installing a KMP steering wheel into the BMW. So here's the absolutely beautiful KMP steering wheel. The KMP Drivetrain Solutions company is actually based out of the Netherlands and they basically make bolt-on applications that don't throw any codes for airbags or uh, any other codes when you swap out your stock steering wheel to an aftermarket. Uh, as you can see here, it includes buttons that you can program and then it also uh, has the paddle shifters for the DCT transmissions. So the KMP wheel is actually based on an OMP Targa steering wheel. So it has the Alcantara steering wheel cover, um, obviously the yellow center line indicator. They swap out their own KMP uh, logo um, for the OMP. Um, and then they also provide a, a really detailed installation guide and they've also got some other wiring here. So this wiring can be used to hook up any of these buttons uh, that you may want. Uh, you can do things like windshield wipers or M Sport button, Sport button, uh, flash headlights, things like that. Instruction manual actually provides a lot of detailed information for how to be able to hook those up. Uh, you can also do a lot of customizing with this uh, particular wheel. Uh, if you want um, lettering, actually laser engraved, you can do that. Uh, I didn't do any of that with this particular uh, wheel because um, I really wasn't sure what buttons I was going to use or how I was going to hook them up. So there is one thing I want to note about the KMP steering wheels and the compatibility of the E82-135i DCT transmission. Uh, I actually contacted them because on their website it wasn't clear whether or not the E90 M3 DCT wheel would work in the 135i. So I actually contacted KMP directly and asked uh, if they could confirm fitment of the uh, steering wheel in the 135i with the DCT transmission. They actually said that they had had some issues with that. Uh, they were trying to work that out and they actually asked me to send in my stock steering wheel. That would allow them to figure out the wiring and make sure and confirm that it fit. So I did that. They actually adjusted the wiring for the 135i steering wheel. Uh, and then confirm that it did work with the DCT. All right, so to get started, uh, we'll have to get the stock steering wheel off. There's really only a couple of tools that you'll need to be able to do that. The first one will be a uh, basically just a flathead screwdriver. Um, and then after that, uh, we will need just a 16 millimeter socket uh, on an impact gun, or you might be able to do it with a breaker bar or something like that. Let's get started. All right, so we're here at the interior uh, with the stock steering wheel. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is we actually have to get the airbag off. Um, and so to actually get this off, you actually have to release two clips from the back side. So they can be a little difficult to see. Uh, let's see if we can get this uh, set up here. So you'll actually see that there is a little indentation right here. A little, it's like almost a little cut in the uh, in this in the back of the steering wheel. And what you simply do is you just take your flathead screwdriver, you insert it, and you'll feel a little bit of a resistance. And as you as you put that in, um, the steering wheel uh, airbag will pop uh, will kind of pop out. And then you just need to do that on the other side, uh, and the, the airbag will pop right off. So we'll start on this right side first, and then I'll switch over to the left side, do the same, uh, and it'll easily pop out. All right, so once you have it popped out, you can just uh, tilt it up and uh, you'll notice that there will be a uh, green and a black connector and within that there's just two little uh, releases that are on top you can just take your flathead screwdriver and just pry these little uh, black clip part up uh, and then you can release the uh, first green connector do the same for the black uh, and then release that one as well. Obviously you want to disconnect the battery in the back 
um, so be sure you do that before you get started. All right, and there it is, it's out. So uh, to get the steering wheel off, the next thing you'll need to do is you obviously have your black and green, uh, black and green connectors for the airbag. Uh, the only thing that is left is just to use your 16 millimeter socket here on the bolt. And then once we undo that, the steering wheel will slide off. So there we go, all done. All right, so now that we have the uh, steering wheel removed, the next thing we need to do is actually remove this top steering wheel uh, column cover. And so to do that, you just need a little uh, interior pry bar. Uh, there's actually a little clip that connects the top portion of the, co uh, of the cover here to the bottom portion uh, of the cover down here, uh, and it has it on both sides. So what I like to do is just use this, kind of put this in between the steering wheel column uh, and the cover, and then if you just kind of put that in there and just kind of pry out and up, uh, it usually will release itself. Uh, there you go, just like that, and then do that uh, uh, on the other side as well. So once you get this off, then you, uh, there are just uh, some little clips in here, uh, which you can use to just release uh, this little leather piece um, off the cover. So once we've got the top cover off, the next thing we have to do is actually get the bottom cover off. Um, you'll notice here that there are uh, a couple of clips. There are, there's one clip on this side and then one on the other side. We can just sort of pull back on this clip and then pull it down and it'll release. And so once we do that on both sides, we can get the bottom cover off. All right, so now that we've got the uh, bottom cover off, the next thing we need to do is we need to release the uh, airbag chassis harness, what they call it uh, in the instruction manual. So there's two sets of wires on this right side of the steering column. The one we want is the top one. So you should just be able to release uh, that and it'll come right out. All right, so now that we have that out, uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to use this little bridge, which is supplied by KMP. And this will basically just slide on to the connector that we just unplugged. And then this is basically what keeps the airbag light from going off. This plug will think that it's actually connected. The only issue is that on this plug here, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a wing, uh, sort of a wing right here um, that uh, I'm going to have to cut off or, or trim that down to make sure that that actually will get the connector into the bridge. So I'm going to do that uh, and then plug up the bridge. All right, so I've got the bridge connected. Uh, sorry, I didn't show you guys actually cutting off that little wing. Uh, I just used a pair of snips uh, and was able to just cut it off real easily. And then the bridge um, actually slid right on to the uh, airbag chassis connector uh, or the harness. So basically this piece is done and we can just kind of leave it tucked up in here like so. And then the next thing we will need is to actually use the uh, airbag connection and uh, KMP supplies another P another harness to plug in there and that is what it will run your buttons on the actual steering wheel. So here's the applied harness from KMP which will go into the airbag receptacle and so basically all we have to do here is take this basically we will just plug it into the airbag connector there we go um, so for now I'm actually just going to leave this or leave all the wiring unconnected uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet with all the buttons so for now uh, I'll just leave this like so and uh, it'll just be up under the uh, the bottom part of the cover
got pretty much everything ready to go uh, at the steering column. We've got the old steering wheel off. We've got the new electrical connectors in for the KMP wheel. The next thing we basically need to do is we need to take the KMP wheel apart, uh, which will uh, include these bolts here to take the steering wheel itself off. Then there's a couple more bolts for the fixed mount. Once we get that apart, then we can put it, uh, we can assemble it back together uh, inside the uh, inside the car. So to get the steering wheel off, uh, you'll just need to remove these six bolts, and you can use a T25 Torx bit to do that. So one thing to note when you take this steering wheel apart is that the adapter here for the paddle shifters as well as the buttons um, have a couple of clips here on the back which hold the wiring and mount that to the actual adapter. And so in each of these two bottom holes we have two bolts that also have uh, nuts on the back. Uh, so these two bolts are a little bit longer than the others so they actually will thread through and then you can attach these connectors here on the back with the bolts. So once we have that off, next all we have to do is get this uh, fixed plate off. So what I did find was that uh, if you, you can use a 1 8 uh, inch Allen wrench. Uh, it should be able to do the job, you just got to be careful with it um, and uh, be able to take these bolts out. Alright, so now that we have everything deconstructed, you can see here that uh, there are a couple of wires here on the back, uh, a couple of connectors. Those, so these two will go into the connectors uh, on the actual steering wheel, steering wheel ring. And now we do actually have access, so we, um, we can now slide this onto uh, the actual steering wheel. We can put our bolt on, we can put these back through. Um, and make sure everything is connected um, and then we will just put the steering wheel back together in the car. So let's get to it. So the first thing we'll do is we will uh, have to connect these electrical connectors uh, to, to, do, to these two pinouts here and then once we get that done we will actually connect the adapter onto the tooth portion of the column here and then we will thread on the, uh, uh, the bolt uh, and we'll tighten all that down. For these two connectors, uh, you'll notice that one of them has a right, uh, the other one should have a left on it, but this one didn't come with a left, they usually say right and left, and so you know that this right one goes in the right side the pin connector, and then the left one goes in the left side.
this wheel, it feels so good. It's actually been a few months since I've installed it and uh, I wanted to take a little bit of time to drive around with it so that I could give you guys a good review and give you some thoughts after I've had a little bit of time. I've actually done three track events with it. Two of them uh, were with Grid Life, and then one of them was just a uh, track weekend, an HPDE with the BMW CCA. Uh, I had the wheel on for all of those, uh, uh, for all of those events and it was fantastic. It's exceeded my expectations. Uh, really have you know very few complaints about it. So the car for the most part is a track car. Uh, I drive it very sparingly on the road. Uh, I'll do that in between some track events, especially if I've made some changes to the car or uh, you know if I just want to um, kind of get it out make sure everything's still feeling good before I go to a track event. So there's definitely some things that if I were daily driving the car, I may not love about the steering wheel, but overall it's fantastic. Uh, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who was interested in it, whether you want to drive it on the track, whether you want to drive it, uh, whether it's a daily driver, doesn't matter, uh, it's, it's awesome. The size of the steering wheel is very good. Uh, I like it. It is a little bit smaller than stock, which I mentioned earlier uh, in this video, but uh, I, it works well, especially out on track. Um, you know, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit smaller, a little more compact, and I like it better because you know, in terms of turning uh, and, and getting around corners, uh, it just feels better to me personally. I was concerned that around tight corners because of the smaller radius. I was gonna to have to turn the, car, uh, turn the steering wheel more to get the same amount of steering wheel lock on the wheels, but really, I have, I, I've been to three different tracks. Some of them have tight 90 or 180 degree turns, and I've never had an issue. Uh, so really, while I was concerned about it initially, it has not been a problem uh, actually out on track. Um, the actual the actual size and width of the steering wheel where the grips are is very good. Uh, I like it. It's a little bit smaller again than the than the steer, uh, than the M Sport steering wheel I had. It's not quite as thick. It's not quite as meaty around here, but uh, it's it's not something that I would complain about or would say is is bad or would have an issue with. The, uh, in terms of the size, the only downside is that uh, because it is smaller, it's the 330 millimeters, uh, to get it in the positioning where I like it in terms of uh, you know, where I want the steering column, you can cut, you know, obviously you can move this up and down, in and out. Uh, when, I, when I look at my gauges, uh, you know, the, the, the inside of the steering wheel cuts off the top of the speedometer just a little bit, as well as the tack. So you don't really have quite a clear full view of your gauges in terms of the maybe the top two or three numbers on your speedometer and tack. But, uh, you know, that's not, I mean, that's not, it, it's a small thing. It's sort of a nitpicky. On track, obviously, it, you know, it doesn't really matter much. Uh, the, in terms of the electronics, uh, it's it's been flawless. I've been out on track. I've driven it around town just a little bit, and I have never had an issue where I select a gear and the car does not respond. Anytime I do an upshift or a downshift, uh, the car responds and gives me the correct gear. So I've never had any issue in terms of clicking the gear and it not doing anything. Every time I click a gear on track. Uh, or around town, it always responds just like the stock steering wheel would. I've never had any issue with uh, any codes or anything being thrown up. So, uh, you know, obviously we've gone over the wiring with how you wire everything in, and I've never had any issue with the codes uh, so far. I will say one thing to note is that because you have the spacer and it puts the steering wheel a little bit closer to you, so the uh, windshield wiper and the blinker switches are a little bit further away. Uh, they're not quite as close, so you kind of have to get used to it. You kind of have to think about it where normally, uh, you know, you can just hit that uh, nice and easily. 
with the stock steering wheel with this one you kind of have to move you kind of have to push your hands a little bit more forward than normal but that's pretty standard with putting on any sort of aftermarket steering wheel often you will have uh, it will be closer to you and you'll have your um, your windshield wiper fluid or, or your, your windshield wipers or your uh, your your blinkers a little bit further away my favorite feature so far which likely is is probably everybody's in terms of you know why they may buy the steering wheel is the the gear selectors uh, the the feel of them the response uh, is just second to none I mean these are legitimately motorsport components they're made of carbon fiber um, and you know they're they're solid they feel very very good uh, the return on them is very quick and uh, you know they just on track when you just hit the gear hit the gear uh, it feels great even when you're in into a braking zone and you're going down multiple gears uh, you know they just do a great job of releasing back to their uh, normal position for you to grab the next gear they they are beautifully made obviously the aesthetics of them are just fantastic so pretty much to sum up everything the wheel is fantastic uh, absolutely love it I would highly recommend it uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video I hope uh, if anybody's installing one or is thinking about installing one it's quite easy and I hope that this video is useful for you uh, if you if you liked it Give me a thumbs up, uh, maybe subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be doing more content like this as well as uh, you can check out the videos from our track days. We went to uh, AMP, uh, NCM and Bowling Green and then also Barber. Uh, so check those out uh, and we'll see you guys in the next one.